What's up, everybody? Brett here, back today playing some more Battle Brothers. And we are going to take this fight again. I'm pretty stoked to do it. This is the biggest outlaw group we've ever faced. Uh, the fact that they're backed by a Blade Dancer and a leader is not surprising, but it's our first Blade Dancer that we need to kill. He did a quite the number on us. Let's go ahead and pass with certain brothers who will almost certainly not be able to attack this turn. Um, we made some adjustments after our last attempt. Namely, we brought in more archers and we moved some people around on the front lines to better facilitate our use of fire pots, which I'm hoping will be a pretty good equalizer against uh, the Blade Dancer if we can make that happen. But I want to have the ability to snipe and I also want to have my handguns in the center here and have them you know, have the biggest variety of targets possible. It kind of sucks that there's some terrain features in the way here. Might end up messing us up a little bit. Last time we did this, I didn't even notice the uh, the leader. So I want to keep an eye out for him this time and see what he looks like. That's a three man. That's probably as good as we're going to get. Send Edgel up there. Go for a round swing. Excellent. And this is what we failed to do last time, uh, which was to just really punish them. So Ulfric here, he's going to use his throwing weapons. That's cool. Hmm. And I have this one fire pot, which I was hoping to use on the Blade Dancer, but he might not come in right away. So instead, let's just put big damage on these guys, and we are landing shots. I'm proud of my boys. Okay. Our Hamian here did not land his shots, but that's not really that surprising. I think if we could manage to get three kills. You know, let's take some shots at the archers. Yeah, that, that was nice. Three kills on the first turn is pretty ballin'. Way better than we did in our last attempt. I don't know why I thought I had my boy uh, Miguel in this fight, but we do not. So we only have the one fire pot, which I will happily drop on him. Because he's got the weaponry that he has, or he's using the weaponry that he has. He is not going to move once he gets engaged. I don't, I don't see that happening. And I'm not really all that scared to step forward a little bit here. I don't want to step in there that does not benefit me at all. But I'll step in here because I know that I can... There we go. And that's the three kills that we was looking for. That I can do this. And we'll spear wall here. Good hits. And we'll step in here as well. I'll step there, but I'm not going to step up any more than that. I just want to make sure that our back line doesn't get stepped on. Uh, we kept our, our line really flat last time. And they also did not come to us last time. I think the inclusion of our archers, it's pretty likely that that's what caused them to think that they needed to engage with us. So we, we I think we managed to shift the AI simply by changing our team's composition and capabilities. Which is pretty fascinating. All right, let's see where the Blade Dancer goes in. Perfect. If that's, if that's what he wants to do for the rest of this battle, we will be happy. Oh, nice. We, we whiffed and got a kill. That was that archer we had. I'm pretty sure that we hurt. But I really wanted to get this outlaw here. Anyone who has the ability to not engage with us. Oh, and there's the, the officer. Harun the Traitor's Bane. He's not wearing any spectacular gear, but he is using a fighting spear, which is pretty solid. I'm going to shoot here. Wybor is the only one potentially who could get harm from that. Let's take out our billhook. Getting rid of this guy is a priority for me. I've got a four-man shot there. I'm going to take it. Very good. Line shot. And we double whiff. Hmm. Not a fan of that. I may not even need to use my grenade here. Which would be excellent. I'm not really itching to use it as much as I've talked about it. It is... I've paid anywhere from like 900 
to about 700 to 900 for it. Yeah, we're going to shield wall here. Perfect. And we're going to step in there. So every time we throw one of those, we're throwing away a giant pile of money. Which is how I look at it. Happy that he whiffed here with that axe. And that's partly because he's breaking. Um, I've got the adrenaline to go for a line shot here. I'm going to take it. Yeah, and that's why. And we're going to go for that swing. And we're just we're not hitting the guy who's already running. But that felt good. Two more dead. And we're down to 17 enemies here. And we haven't taken any damage. Fingers crossed. So already, I just the snowballing that we've done in this battle compared to our last one is, is out of control. We have given the Blade Dancer a, a better target, unfortunately. And he kills his own dude, who was already running away, but still. Pretty ruthless. And he hit Erhamian, I think? But that spear wall appears to be doing some work. It's just keeping them back. And they've, they've placed these two guys here who don't even really want to get in the melee anyway. But once they're gone, it's like either you step in, dude, or you're... You're no longer relevant. I'm going to shoot up here where we have a chance for a 3 for Just crushing. And I'm going to go in on this guy. He's uh, he's pretty strong. Let's break that shield. I'm not going to try to break a Sipar shield. It's a little too tough, I think. Perfect. And we're going to get the reset. Two kills. Beautiful. Step in there. Force the run. And let's see if we can't start putting some hits on this guy. Let's get some guys there in case they want to try and run. We'll get a three-man surround on the Blade Dancer. Soon to be four-man. Uh, Andreas has... Yeah, let's go ahead and switch him here. He's much deadlier with his bow. But we're going to have a chance to do some AoE shots. We're giving the... The Blade Dancer a few different targets here. But all of our targets are pretty healthy other than Urhamian. Let's see what he does with it. Footwork into, he goes for the back line, which is who I thought he would target, and I'm happy he did. Wow, that was from downtown. Okay. Oh, dang, I thought this would go straight up and down. That's okay that it doesn't. Let's go for him. Get the reset. Perfect. And really, any damage we do and put on this guy, I'm cool with. Yeah. Not the best movement there. And he's so fast, we're not going to be able to get Overwhelm on him. We've got a three-man on the officer, though. Thankfully, he doesn't have any armor that we need to be worried about trying to get or any of that stuff. Okay, a couple unfortunate misses there, but if we land one of these... Alright, we've got him wavering. That's kind of like step one. I'd rather nobody escape here, but it looks like some of them are going to be able to. I'm going to step in here, but man, we're giving him some good targets. But we're going to be a little bit faster than him this time, thanks to his loss of initiative. But not by much. And not where it matters, because the guys who are faster... ...are on the wrong side of the map. Actually, Longbeard is going to get a chance to take a shot or two. 
Apply one stack, two stacks of Overwhelm. Nice. And we didn't get killed because of that, probably. And by getting killed, I just mean take damage, of course. His footwork movement has been quite annoying. We're going to move the frontliners before we move Logan. Very good. Almost got him there. Yeah, let's try and tie down everyone we can. I don't mind some of these dudes want to escape. Damn, we're missing. We get a roll to 56 on a 55. Ugh. Nice. And that broke the officer. Alright, land it. I 100% should have moved here. That was a mistake. Just straight up, plain old mistake. We gave him a, a three shot here. Assuming, no, you know what? He's exhausted. He might not be able to do any of that anymore. I know it does take more fatigue. Damn, and he's just... Dodge City right now. We've got four stacks of Overwhelm, though. If he hits me, I'm going to be pretty perturbed. He hits me twice. That dude's stats have to be good. I have another attack up there. I just accidentally clicked through. Dang. All right, nine lives kicked off, but we did get the fighting spear. I'm gonna move over here. Um, and if we have any brothers who like just generally, let's separate. Give them no good targets. All right, we've got to hit them. I mean, we missed all of our best attacks. Long beard here, yeah. Keep shooting. Overwhelm is the way. Good hit. Did not expect to hit there. Happy we did though. Tongue is fatigued. That's no good. That gives us one less instance of of overwhelm on him, making him all the more dangerous. Alright, don't kill me, bro. Nice, he took a swing at Tongue. Who is the most hurt? But he's got almost all of his HP. Happy to have applied some bleed there. Get him. And down he goes. Awesome. And the only one left is somebody that we can't chase down. And he's out of here. Well done, us, and for our troubles, Sir Geofrim's Royal Mace. A full metal mace with a short shaft and attached blades. The smith who forged this weapon certainly knew what he was doing. Oh, we gotta compare that. I'm stoked. Anything else of note? I mean, we got another fire pot. That's pretty cool. And 45 tools for our trouble. That's huge for us because we desperately needed them. But we've got brothers that use maces, so that's an amazing pickup for us, assuming it's got, you know, solid stats. Which one has to assume it does. Um, we also got the fighting spear. But we don't necessarily need that. Okay. Mace bros. I think we have. I know Uldric for sure. Someone named the Iron Cudgel should probably have a, a fat mace. Jebediah Diggs has been using one. Um, honestly he would probably be better off because of his low melee skill as a spear bro. But I do love the Heavy Southern Mace, and it does have some synergy when he's standing next to Tiberius. Uh, but let's see. Let's compare these two here. So, 79 durability, 80 durability, identical, essentially. 35 to 55, 35 to 50. So, 5 more DPS on the unique. We've got 50 and 100% in terms of ignoring and affecting this versus armor. So, 10% more damage ignores armor. But it is 10% less effective against armor. It's the exact same amount of fatigue, but weapon skills build up minus one less fatigue. So, it's good, it's an improvement, but barely, is how I'm going to look at that. It's it's barely an improvement. 
But that's okay. We take those. And it looks sweet. And I'm happy to have it. Not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. That is a solid pickup for us. And I love getting the extra fire pot too. We should give that to someone. And that's just another huge net gain. Like I said, that's like 800 gold right here uh, on average that we just grabbed. So if we have someone who can hold it, and we should. Come on, somebody. Somebody hold this for me. It's all right. Okay. Anyway, that was a fun fight, and it went way better this time. I'm not even not even ashamed of it. Sometimes you just got to take the fight again and see how it goes. I felt like we were having some pretty bad luck, but also it was mostly just bad strategy that I was employing in our first attempt on that fight. You're always at an advantage, in my opinion, when the AI is coming to you, as opposed to when you have to go to the AI. And that's what we were finding ourselves with in that previous fight. I'm going to take this fight. It's still daytime. We can hope to get some good loot, but who knows? See what they do. If they come to us or what the case might be. Likelihood of us getting another famed item from this location, meh, but I don't know. It's not it's not amazing, but it's pretty good. We're pretty far away. There's a few things that affect your likelihood of getting famed loot. The most obvious being if there is a, a person that you're fighting that's holding a particular weapon, then of course you have a good chance of getting it. Alright, I mean we landed some stuff. Later, man. I wish I could play music. Just be like, so you had a bad day. As soon as, every time Rodrigo, like, smashes someone, that's what I would play. This is scary zone right here. I just realized I just stepped Wybor into triple hammers. That's, like, really scary. Ought not to have done that, probably. Especially not without giving you a shield wall or something to that effect. Just give them more targets. Hopefully they don't three-man beat Wybor to death. Which they probably could do. If they all three of them landed their shots, I think that kills Wybor. The odds of that, of course, pretty low. But stranger things have happened. Alright, he went... Yeah, he went for Screamer. Perfect. And they're whiffing. I will take that. One of these days I'll get a Rondo Dagger. Shooting to the backfield and we hit four of them. Beautiful. I'll take this shot. Hopefully Wybor doesn't get smacked. He does, but it comes with a kill. Let's do that. Seems good. Line shot, and that's devastating to them. Get our spear out and get in the mix here. Man, we got the bleed, but we couldn't get the kill. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go ahead and use my adrenaline here to step in and go for a line shot yeah that that felt pretty worth it that took two of them way out of the fight it 
There's only one dude that we don't have locked down here. It's this archer in the center. I think we'll be able to step around and get him before he gets a chance to get away. Um, yeah, we'll go switch out to the axe. Good hit. And we do need to start sort of putting a beating on these guys down here. Because they are still fighting. They're just freaking out a little bit. And then there were two. Cross your fingers for some legit loot, guys. One hundred percent running people down. No one gets out of here alive. There's no real sense of urgency other than my desire to just be done with this fight. Because we do have a, a quest to turn in. A contract. We'll have made a little bit of money off of this. That was kind of the point. We needed a bit of time to recuperate. We were definitely trying to explore. And we're getting experience and amazing loot from this. So silverware, a stack of money, another stack of tools for a battle where we essentially didn't lose anything. And we're putting our huge new capacity to the test. We've upped it twice now in recent episodes. And yeah, I'm just having fun exploring for the moment. Finding some of these unique uh, and legendary locations. Checking them off our bucket list. I actually didn't even consider that the, uh, the goose could spawn down in the desert. Do these give you extra vision? Looks like they do. Just a little bit. Like as much as a hill, perhaps. But I do think that there's stuff here. Stuff that I would like to explore at some point. Mini Orc Young. I don't think we can pass up any fights. We want to make as much money as possible. And Ulfric has leveled as well. Good man, Ulfric. Let's see what kind of rolls we get. Happy to see a 3 there in his melee skill. I'll take a 4 in his range defense. And I'll take a 4. He had a lot of good rolls. Little too little, little too late. Uh, he definitely needs the resolve. And I'd like to get his range defense up just a bit higher. And with his last two points, I mean, I could make him another throwing master. Slash sword hybrid. I think getting him underdog is pretty important. And also I like getting killing frenzy as well. I think I'll, I'll just hold off on the, uh, the throwing master. I'm going to get him killing frenzy. I think on average that's just going to do more work for him. And if we have anybody that... Like I want to get Aerosel his level. So let's take Tongue back out. Let's take back out... We have Yaku here. Let's take out Andreas. And everyone else I think is fine. Let's go kill these young. Only seven of them. But I think our general idea right now is just to try and stock up. There's bound to be another uh, big event happening soon. It's random is what we have it set to. So we're not going to know, right? Is it going to be the undead? Is it going to be a green skin invasion? Uh, is it going to be a war between the houses? We don't know yet. So I want to stock up on goods. I want to explore as much of the world while I can before it goes crazy. Uh, I meant to step him forward as an accident. That's okay. Just let them come on in. If our entire backline was like seven warbows. 
we'd be able to kill almost all of them before they even engaged. God, I love Warbos. But you gotta try new stuff, you know. I can't do the same builds every time, that's no fun. Take it home, Yaku. Yes. Good man. We'll let them do the closing for us. Perfect. We'll wait here. He's undoubtedly going to charge into somebody. And because they're running, we're just going to step in. Let's lock them down. Oh, dude, later, man. And that is it. And that's all. What do we get for this? Who knows? Maybe a stack of tools. That would be pretty cool. But... No point in passing a fight like this. Free experience, of course, as well as uh, hopefully a little bit of free money. Our packs are not yet full. And Franz demands that we kill Greenskins on sight. Lest the Wa grow too big. I really wish we could have role-played this, uh, this Let's Play a little bit more. I was super down to do it. I'm not really a giant role-play guy. That's not, you know, as Austin Power says, it's not really like my bag, <laughs> normally. But, uh, I was down to do it. I just, it's a world that I love. Two worlds that I love kind of colliding sounded really fun to me. It's just, we just kind of weren't able to do it with the backgrounds available to us. And that was just my bad with the misunderstanding of, um, the limit, the real limitations of the peasant run, which I could have sworn were different. So they no longer have ambush trade routes. So the prices for them to buy our stuff, we soared a little bit, have gone down a little. It was 19 before, now it's 18. But the prices to buy for us should be much, much better, which we will do. But we're still going to sell. See, the Golden Goose is worth 3500 but we'll hold on to it. We're not in desperate need of funds. Um, I want to have, I want to use these gold, um, zipper shields. I just think for me aesthetically, ooh, I didn't mean to sell that extra mace, but that's okay. We don't, we don't really need it. I was holding on to it. Mostly for, uh, reasons that don't make any sense. Look at all these quivers. I wish there was a way to, like, unload the quivers into your inventory. Yeah, don't need any of this. Just kind of skimming it quickly with my eye. What else I'd be skimming it with, I don't know. Is anyone not using a golden zipper shield? Who's committing such blasphemy? Why, boar? Ah. Anyone else? Oh, Aldrich. Actually, the silver kind of looks cool on Aldrich. You know what? You're excused. You're excused from it, Ulrich. You get a pass. At some point, we would love to switch all the way over to heater shields, I think, on everybody. Um, we're not at the point in our playthrough yet where we just have, like, all kite shields and all heater shields to switch everyone out all the time. We don't have, like, this huge amount of, uh, like, reserve gear. There could, there could come a time where we want to do that. Let's buy all the ammo too even though it's a bit expensive I think we need it this place has no food we need to go on to another area or we will starve and the southern long mail shirt that is for sale is now under 3,000 before it was 3,700 if you'll remember and we wanted to get that for probably Yaku or Arizel yeah but we're gonna pick that up right now happy to give that to him that'll make his battle forge much more useful um, we could even consider, once again, doing another Hyena Fur Mantle. Who's just wearing absolute garbage? Is anyone? Not exactly. You want to sell that, though. 
Yeah, we need to get out of here. I don't want to spend all my money here either. They don't even have the contract anymore that I was hoping for. I'm not going to make anything else. I'd, I'd rather hold on to my stuff. Okay. Yeah, I'm good to go. Let's travel to Al Hazred. And I think this will be a good base of operations for us to explore the final corner of the map. And of course, we'll get a chance to do more arena runs. Uh, which I think you guys enjoy as much as I do. And it's a good opportunity for us to try and unlock those traits for our brothers who are very close to getting them. And that's that's something that I want to do a lot before we find the Witch's Hut. Um, we could spend five, six episodes in a row just doing nothing but arena and exploring. Arena, exploring. And that would not be a wasted episode. Checking to see who I've got. There we go. All right, let's get in there. We still, of course, have to find a mercenary company to beat down on. Nothing in here I need to have. Oh, my God. The Living Mirage's Thunder. Okay, let's look at this. Because we're not super far off from this. If I sell the Golden Goose. <laughs> um... An expertly cast iron barrel with a long wooden handle. It fires shrapnel in a cone and can hit multiple targets with one shot. Cannot be used. Okay. I don't think it has a special description. The Living Mirage is Thunder. 82 durability. 60 durability. Way more durable. 43 to 92 damage. 35 to 75. That's huge. Hold on. Let me do some little like basic math. Twenty-five. It does twenty-five more DPS just straight up, and then that's twenty-five and a hundred. So it has the same effectiveness versus armor, and it's way lighter. It's five fatigue lighter. Twenty-five more damage is a lot of damage. That's an amazing gun. Um, I think we can get it, guys. Uh, it's gonna be a pretty big sacrifice. And I desperately need all of this ammo, all of these tools, all of this food. So, oh wow, they want the silk and the spices here. That's That goes a long way. Um, I could, you know, I could definitely sell the sword lance. I could consider, I think the only way I get it is if I sell the golden goose. Which, I kind of wanted to keep it in my inventory for a while. But the the idea of passing up such a weapon feels really bad. I kind of wanted to keep these for just like role-playing purposes, but it might not make a lot of sense. Um, let's see what the arena wants us to do. Two gladiators. We can smash two gladiators as we've proven in the past. Um, we can't do it with just any old brothers though. Uh, we do need some slightly stronger brothers. In good gear. Who is close? Aldrich is very close. So he's coming in. I would like to bring in Screamer. Just, we gotta get him to 11. Um, who else is close? I definitely want to get Edgel in there too. As the wearer of that armor, he's gonna have, like, big responsibilities one day. Tongue would be good to get in there too versus them. Let's bring in Tongue. An archer might be just what we need. We'll of course pass. Yeah, this guy's going to get shot in the neck. Alright, 53%. Oh, wow. He didn't take a lot of damage from that at all. We hit him in the head, though. Like applying a little overwhelm. If he wants to spend his turn going around, good for him. We landed the stun. Shoot him twice in the chest. Tongue has footwork. But if we could have stunned him, I wouldn't have had to use it. But Tongue's done all the damage so far. Bone plating took a shot for us. Wow, and he has footwork too. Well played. 
There we go. We landed that stun. Alright, that'll let me shoot him, like, straight up, point blank. Edgel's not hitting anything. Perfect. That's stun, man. Stun is just OP in the arena. Edgel has done nothing this battle. Alright, now I need to be ready. I can't, man, I can't even get away from him. So we just need to switch. And hope to hit. And we crushed him with a 28% shot. The game's like, don't say I never gave you anything. And we're just going to go for the stun every time with him. Over time, this dude could grind us down. If we don't start hitting him. If he shield walls... We don't hate it because he's doing less damage. Let's just go for an aim shot. Okay, that's a hit. I'm not scared because we still have so many like resources armor wise and health wise to go. And he's just one guy. But he can do a lot of damage to us. He can cost us way more money. That's good. Getting bleed on him is huge. Bleed plus a stun? Yeah. That feels good. And I'm actually going to switch out back to the bill hook. It's not his forte, but I don't want to waste any more ammo on him. And yeah, there goes the second stack of bleed from a bleed master. Or I should just say a, uh, a cleaver master. But I think they have the... Uh, man, what's it called? Is it... It makes it so that they bleed less for less number of turns. I forget what that, that perk is called. I don't I don't take it very often. Relentless, perhaps? No, Tongue is now an arena fighter that's good. That's bonus five for him. Where are you, Tongue? Over here? Yes, bonus five resolve. He's up to 45. That's great. What do we take out to put him in? Oh, we took out Screamer. Sure. Okay. And let's make sure we give Tongue his uh, Falcon back. So that was nice money. Puts us up to 9,400. Let's see what this is about. We need payment in advance. Okay. I'll accept. So I got a little bit more added to my total. I basically just need to sell the goose to get the gun. I'm gonna do it, guys. Goodbye, goose. I think if you can turn your goose into a badass gun, you're making the right moves. So let's just go ahead and do it. There are gonna be better prices down the road, but that's that's okay. Oops, not the weaponsmith, at the alchemist. There we go. And who are we gonna give that bad boy to? That's the real question. Whoever has the best stats, honestly. It's probably not going to be Tuna Can or Yaku. Um, they're still lower level, but probably not going to be them. Ak here has really terrible stats. Um, Logan's at 79 range skill. Arizal's at 70 and may well pass him uh, with his two stars. He's only level 8. So it may end up being Arizal. The other competitor is going to be Zigzagonoff and Moody. Zigzag is at 84. So for me, it makes sense to give that to him for now, which is cool. And then Yaku here, I'm going to need more, more of these gunpowder bags to switch him out. And we just hope one day we get some good crossbows <laughs> one of these days. Okay. Anything else? Anything else? What am I? What am I doing? 
I'd love to test this bad boy out. I, I don't know if we're going to notice the difference, but I think if we hit five dudes with this weapon as opposed to a regular one, that 25 extra damage is going to train. I mean, that's like another 50% damage on top of what it does. That's that's huge. Hopefully one day we, we notice a huge hit and we're just like, God dang, that was awesome. But we'll see. So I need more crowns. I think I'm just going to sell this bill hook. And I'm probably going to sell this armor as well. We'll get more, we'll get better. Because all we have to do is come over here, destroy this, and come right back. Then we'll have operating money again. And we'll take whatever that other contract is. We'll get enough cash to restock our tools, food, all that stuff. But yeah, I mean, you're going to go bankrupt when you buy a 13k item. It's just going to happen. And yeah, that's a nice, that's a real fight for us. I'm happy to see a little bit of a challenge tacked on. Ooh, and we're in like a cliff environment in the desert this might be the first one i fought on i think or one that i noticed a little bit of terrain here cool and there's omar the nomad not a very original name but he's got a scimitar so we need to give him some respect I'm happy that we're almost at the point where all of our brothers are level 11 and above, which makes them very interchangeable for us. I don't have to worry so much about, you know, playing bad compositions just to try and get extra experience. That sucks. We just gave him that weapon and he just totally whiffs with it on his first try. It's understandable. I went back to the gun store today, this morning actually. The one that I mentioned in the last episode. Went and picked up some knives for uh, Christmas presents. Some beautiful knives. One of those things, it's hard to know what to get people, but when you see something like that, a craftsman item, and you think you know people who will appreciate it, it's kind of like a no-brainer. If this guy destroys my shield, I can see it. It's going to happen. Just wait for it. I'm going to lose my mind. It's got the same durability as a kite shield, so it very well could happen if I don't if I don't kill him. I'm going to use adrenaline here and see if I can't. Do something. Like that. That exact thing. Great swords, man. That's why we bring him. The last weapon we sacrificed that much for, I think, was Rodrigo's Greatsword. And it's come in handy a lot. If you destroy my Linworm shield... Yeah, I was about to say. A curse on all your houses. Ah, oh, I should have used my other ability. I had a stun here. God dang it. The one time I actually had the stun to take advantage of with this Coddle Dagger. Ooh, we got stun on Edgel. He was already a bit hurt from the Gladiator fights, but... Okay, we brain that guy. Holy! That was a quadruple kill on Logan. almost want to change his name to the bloody four that's something that I would do if he didn't have like a really specific nickname dang I had to like really look at the fountains of blood to see if that's what just happened that's that was nuts I don't know have I ever gotten a quadruple kill before I don't I don't know I definitely have gotten triples 100% have gotten triples Quadruples, though? Yeah, I don't know. If you remember me getting a quadruple kill, let me know. I feel like I might have with a handgun at some point. But I don't remember. Alright, we've got him almost breaking. That's good. 
pop that dude. Easy fight, easy life. Go home and make some cash. Did he take my weapon? He sure did. We're, we're being pretty liberal with the uh, the use of our ammo. We could probably be a little more conservative and save some money. Go get in there, shake them up. Instead of shooting, let's go to the axe. Ooh, the whip has a zone of control. How did I not know that? And he died to his bleed, and we get his weapon. Very cool. shots are pretty real. This guy's no doubt he's going to escape. Everyone else seems pretty locked in. Ah, uh, that was a mistake. I 100% could have... Dang it. I could have used adrenaline and caught him. Step in there, that should be good enough though. Because we, we scared him, he lost his, his turn in the order. Otherwise he definitely would have made a nice escape. what I'm talking about, I would recruit this dude. I'd be like, do you need a job, sir? And the Count of Monte Cristo, which I talked about a few times in previous episodes, favorite movie, one of my favorite books of all time, when I was a kid especially. And, uh, awesome movie if you haven't seen it. Jacoba, the, the pirate smuggler. He beats him in a knife fight, the main character does, without too many spoilers. And because he say he he beats him in the knife fight, he has the option to kill him and take his place. And instead of doing that, he decides to spare him. And he uses kind of this this reason to convince the captain is like, take us both, and you'll have a skilled knife fighter who won't do anything bad again, and you'll have me, and like it'll be good. And then because of that, Jacoba swears loyalty to him forever. Could be cool to like save someone like that and have them swear some type of oath or something. I don't know. Goldfest. I'd be interested in going there, but this is not enough money. Um, this is not something I'm interested in. I will camp. I will buy a bunch of stuff. Ooh, okay. Let's see what's up with this. While camping beside the road, a colorful wagon trundles on up with a sort of clanking, jingling, musical, and modesty. You didn't think it a particularly big cart, but about 15 men and women inexplicably pour out of its back. Painted faces, musical instruments, juggling balls, long swords for swallowing, wine jugs for fire breathing. The troop of entertainers fan out and demonstrate in many talent shows as though you'd already paid for their services. When they finish, they clap, stomp their feet, and freeze before you hands out, smiles across their faces. A white-faced mime ironically speaks. What say you travelers care for a show? A mere thousand crowns to entertain you all evening. So this puts all your brothers in a great mood. We're of course financially challenged right now. We're not going to pay them. Uh, if you have a a noble in your party, a adventurous noble, they'll sing a song or they'll request a song that puts everyone in such a good mood they don't even ask you to pay. But Ak is a minstrel, so I'm curious what happens here if we do this. 
Axe steps forward and picks up some of the troops' tools of trade. He tests them out, impressing the entertainers with how well he's able to use their own equipment. The mom asks if perhaps they could play a couple of tunes with him. He nods and joins the entertainers, putting on a show that's for the ages. When it's all over, the troop is so impressed that they try and recruit the man. You tell them that ain't happening, and Ack nods. My time is with the Sons of Sigmar now, but I appreciate the compliment. You ask how much for the show, but the troop leader shakes his head. No need. It was a pleasure playing with him. We've not put on a show like that in some time, and the practice will do us well. And everyone gets in really good spirits, which is cool. So, man, we, we needed to buy food here, which we will do. Which means I gotta spend a lot of money. I needed tools also. I don't know if I can afford to buy as much as I need to. I need to get on to another city. We need to wait until mid or morning at least before we can take on another arena battle. Two more gladiators I'll accept. And that'll pay for all of the tools I need, I think. And for our trouble, I want to put in Aldrich once again. Edgel's a bit hurt, but I... The, the logic is still sound to me. Um, I'm not really interested in getting Tongue like all the way to Master right now, but it was nice to get him that extra 5 resolve. Do we have anyone else that's been there a few times that's... Yeah, like Moody here is very close. He needs two more. Let's try it. I'll take that. And we went for the stun. Not that scared of the net. I'm more just aggravated that I don't have... Let's break out. That way he has less chance to hit me. Good. Stun is good. I don't want to get hit by a fighting axe pretty dangerous weapon and Moody is killing it would love to not get hit by that weapon much more sadly that weapon has almost no armor piercing so he's gonna beat my armor to death before he ever gets to my HP which is the resource that I really want to expend the most and we broke this guy that's great for the stun there and if he wants to start using his shield wall as we said last time good that just means he's not hitting me two stacks of overwhelm good and getting the kill means something for sure could have helped us you know potentially to route this guy we could step in with moody to try and increase our odds of hitting give him another target but he's just intent on beating on edgel Go ahead and drop that down. I'm going to at least step here and give myself the option. There we go. Stack the bleed. And we landed the stun, which drops the, the shield wall, which is great. And I went for the more reliable shot and try to, instead of trying to go for the decapitation, which I, I felt like might have been a little greedy. And there we go. We're back in somewhat good graces. I just bought two stacks. I've also got some stuff here from that fight, of course, that I can sell. These weapons are quite valuable. And incense we're gonna have to sell at a different city but that's like another you know 400 or something crowns that I can count on when I get to where I'm going okay what are we up to seven days worth of food 
Let's get up to eight. I doubt they've had any sub shipment since we've been here last. Let's head back. I wanted to use this as our base of operations, but maybe we need to just go to Goldfest. And sweep down this way back to Al Hazred. And I'm hoping still... Wow, look at this. A few mortars? Oh, hell no. 33 of those bad boys. I've been hoping to see a mercenary company along the road at some point. Uh, we haven't seen them yet, though. Because we've had this ambition for quite some time, and it's such an easy one. Normally, you see them everywhere. I don't know if I've missed them. Because I'm not usually... My brain's not usually tuned to killing them. Oh, wow. Multiple big weapons here. So Robert Skullcracker. 15% chance to hit head. But it's the noble swords that I love. Trusty Oathkeeper. We can compare it to one of these other ones right next to it. Big durability. 58 to 65. Way more damage. Way more damage. 20 to 85%. So same exact armor effectiveness. But it also has weapon skills build up 3% less fatigue. That's a lot. That's a really good weapon. This one, I'm not so sure. I just think it has a better chance to hit head, probably. Sell the incense here. Happy to do that. And then let's see at the armor what they've got. Just decent prices on other stuff. I think I decided not to put this on aerosol's armor but i probably just should we'll get more there'll always be more and we have levels also i should definitely i should definitely do my levels while i'm thinking about it aerosol made it up to level nine happy to see it foreign fatigue quite good foreign range skill good as well and i'm gonna take a three in melee defense and then from here probably just rotation every brother needs to have that in order for our strategy to be maximum effective I would love it if there would have been a Saleh helmet here or two hmm I don't really need to mess with attachments and stuff okay I saw a helmet try to sneak past me. Okay, there's no contracts for me here, which is the sad thing. This is why I came here. Um, I'm going to need to make money. So I'm going to go exploring. I'm going to come out to this side of the map and shoot down. They don't normally put stuff like right on the edge, but it can happen. Yeah, abandoned walls right there just to prove me wrong. Uh, but guys, that's going to be it for today's episode. Uh, when we come back tomorrow, I'm going to probably take a fight or two, head right back to sell, just to make sure we can get the supplies and the money that we need. We're only really good for about four days. I mean, four days is probably enough to explore a good bit of this, but not all of it. Uh, but yeah. Hopefully you enjoyed today's episode. We crushed the Blade Dancer. We unlocked... Uh, unlocked. We, uh, we purchased at great expense. Uh, an awesome weapon which we haven't even used yet, but hopefully we will at some point. We took on some more arena battles. Uh, we know we, we have asserted our dominance over gladiators uh, in smaller numbers, <laughs> at least. Uh, but yeah, I'm still having fun, guys. Hopefully you are too. And as always, guys, I'm Brett, channel's Good Talk Gaming, and I will see you in the next one. Later, y'all.